Hello everyone, back to you into today's second video. Going to have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days or today's second video. That's going to take us to around 29th of May. We'll be able to extend out beyond that, the extended GFS and ECM ensemble zone to around a couple of weeks, takes into the beginning of June. And we'll have a look at CFSV2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That takes us into the middle part of uh, June. So, uh, with the release of the ECMPF 30 day uh, look ahead, of course, and um, that uh, is taking us into the middle of June as well. Looks like it's going to be a lot of dry and warm weather across many parts of Northern Europe uh, in the next four weeks. But have a look at that and uh, see what's going on. It's a lovely day out there today where I'm in North Hampshire. It's not as good up in the north, though. Things will be getting even warmer tomorrow. I think you can see temperatures rising into the upper 20 Celsius uh, tomorrow. Uh, across some southeastern parts of the country, and maybe a little bit of thunder in uh, the breakdown on Thursday. And we'll probably uh, look at the thundery potential for Thursday and tomorrow's uh, live stream. We're going to doing uh, a final uh, Wednesday afternoon live stream tomorrow at four o'clock, and uh, we will probably have a look at the thunder potential for Thursday in that one. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to say a big thank you to our latest uh, Gals Webby's YouTube channel member. So I'm going to say uh, hello and thank you so much to Alan Williams. Thank you so much, Alan Williams, for becoming our latest uh, Gals Webby's YouTube channel member. Absolutely fantastic. That's absolutely great. Thank you so much, Alan, uh, for doing that. We opened the channel up to channel membership around three weeks ago. The response has been absolutely amazing. I think it's around four weeks now. Around four weeks ago, the response has been been absolutely amazing and uh, just thank you so much everybody for becoming uh gazworthy's channel members um it uh, really is very very special what you're doing for us if you'd like to become a channel member for gazworthy all you need to do is click the join button there on the on the home page on the gazworthy's home page or with all of the videos take you through to another page where you'll see what benefits you get and uh whatnot and sign up uh, and become a Gals Webby's YouTube channel member. So thank you so much to all of our uh, channel members. That's absolutely great. Also, thank you so much to all of our patrons and all of our donors uh, as well, PayPal donors. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic way you've all responded uh, to uh, to Gals Webby's over the past few uh, weeks, the past couple of months while we've been in this uh, coronavirus uh, sort of crisis. So thank you so much, everybody. We're going to keep recording, we're going to keep uploading, we're going to keep live streaming, and we're going to keep bringing you the content that you want to uh, see, and also at galswebby's.com, the content you want to read uh, as well, of course. Trying to get the subs up, so please subscribe to the channel if you aren't subscribed. We would like to get 7,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. I don't think we'll be able to do it, but it would be nice if we could get to 7,000 subs by the end of the summer. And, uh, yeah, just subscribe, like, share the videos, all of that good stuff. And uh, and that'll be absolutely great. It'll be absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Right, we'll start off in the tropical Atlantic. So we've been talking about this over the past couple of days. Tropical storm Arthur is still there. It's moved away from the Carolinas now. Yesterday it was menacing the uh, Atlantic coast of North Carolina. It's moved away from uh, Carolinas now, moving out into the North Atlantic. And from here on in, looks like Arthur will um, uh, weaken quite uh, rapidly. So uh, by tomorrow, or probably by the end of today actually, Arthur will be down to a subtropical storm. Storm. And by Thursday, Arthur will then be down to a subtropical depression as he moves in towards Bermuda. And then that will probably, uh, that'll probably be the end of the uh, uh, of this particular tropical storm. The main talking point about this has not really been the impact from Arthur itself. The main talking point with this is how early in the season it is to be getting a tropical storm. It's only like just gone the middle part of, uh, of May. Very early days to be getting this. It could be a heads up that we're going to be in for a big uh, tropical storm and hurricane season this year. We shall see. Right, these are our latest observations. So it's very warm out there at the moment. We can see that we've got 20, it's for xcweather.co.uk, by the way, 22 degrees flashing away there at uh, London Airport and many other places in the Midlands, Church North, for example, Bedford at 19 degrees, Church North is at 20. Uh, many other places in the Midlands, Wittering, 20 degrees, are up into 20 Celsius, East Midlands at 19. Going over towards Wales, it's not as warm uh, through Wales. We've got Pempy Sands at 13, going up to 
to North Wales, Capel Curry, uh, really suffering at only 11 degrees. So obviously it's a lot cloudier and cooler in the west of the southwest, Cardingham at 13 degrees. Well, going up the north was so east of Scotland's doing okay. A boy is at 17 degrees. Aberdeen is at 18 degrees. And Belfast is at 17 degrees. So it, we do still have stubborn banks of cloud and cooler weather uh, across uh, more northern and western parts of the country. Walcott there in northern England at just 12 degrees and Keswick at 14. So some northwest parts of the country are cooler and cloudier, but where the sun is out, it's becoming very warm. And I think we'll see that sunshine gradually spreading northwards across many parts of the country through the course of, uh, uh, of this afternoon. And tomorrow will be a very warm and sunny day, uh, sunny day for nearly all parts of the country. Uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. And uh, look at Great Malvern. Great Malvern today. This is, uh, this is a suggested location for this section of video. So if you'd like to have your local town or city featured within this section of video, then please let us know either through the comments or uh, on our social media accounts, YouTube um, and, uh, and also uh, Facebook, Twitter. We've got Discord now as well. So just let us know where you'd like to see featured within this section of video and uh, and it's not a problem to show uh, your local town city don't think we can quite go down uh, quite go down to village level just yet but uh, we can certainly go to uh, local town level so the red line is a 30 year upper air temperature average for Great Malvern and we're starting off very significantly above average at the moment. The next two or three days are going to remain uh, warm, certainly today, tomorrow and for East Parts of the country probably still very warm on Thursday actually with the cooler air not really pushing through until Friday. By Friday we do see a drop in the temperature taking place, temperature begin to lower, starts to cool off as we get through into Friday, but only temporarily. And over the bank holiday weekend, it looks like temperatures will be lifting up again. Could actually turn uh, really quite warm, I think, by the time you get through to bank holiday Monday. And then that takes us to the final days of May and into the opening days of June. And by then, we see uh, temperatures going back pretty close to average uh, really so possibly a bit of a cool down for you into the first week of June but of course that's a long way off it's extended rain stuff in the more reliable time frame it does look quite warm really precipitation wise not a great deal of rainfall uh, showing up we do have some spikes here uh, when we get this drop in the temperature on Thursday through to Friday there are some precipitation spikes but not all that many of them. It certainly doesn't look like an overly dramatic uh, breakdown. There could be some thunderstorms around, but I'm not seeing this huge, you know, I'm not seeing a huge thundery breakdown potential uh, with this. There may be some heavy downpours around. There could be some showers. There may be some thunderstorms. But uh, but I'm not seeing a, a tremendous amount of, uh, of thunder potential, actually, with this particular breakdown. But we see, we're going to look at it in detail, I think, when we do tomorrow's live stream. And so tomorrow's live stream at four o'clock will be kind of like a storm watch live, if you like. And we'll go through the data and, uh, and we'll try and see them uh, exactly. Uh, we'll try and see then exactly how much fun potential we have. It may get uh, cranked up a little bit that. Uh, after that, it goes dry again as we move into Bank Holiday Weekend. Lots of dry weather coming through then. I mean, to the last days of May and the opening days of June, possibly going a bit more unsettled. Again, I keep having to re-emphasise this. That's extended range stuff. It's a long way out. It's unreliable time frame. So in the reliable time frame, which is like the next week's 10 days, it looks relatively dry, certainly for Great Malvern. But as we go into like the extended range, then it starts to turn more unsettled. But that has been an ongoing signal for the past few weeks. And those more unsettled conditions have never really got going. Maybe they will as we move into June. We'll have to wait and see. Temperature anomalies from the 19th to 27th of May, rather warmer than average of the UK and Ireland. Most parts of Western Europe looking warm. On the eastern side of Europe, though, it's much cooler, a real east west divide with the temperatures in the weekend. And that, of course, was showing up on the ECM uh, 30 day outlook that uh, we released uh, earlier on today. Precipitation anomalies from the 19th to 27th of May, drier than average, really, for much of the UK and for Ireland. Many western parts of Europe are looking drier than average as well. It's a little bit wetter for the far north 
and possibly in the southeastern corner. But yeah, I'd say most parts of your patch are looking quite dry with a precipitation anomaly in the week ahead. That's how the GFS is looking for Friday then, and quite a significant area of low pressure in the Atlantic on Friday actually, so although there may not be all that much of a fungi breakdown on Thursday, by the time you get through to Friday, we have got a very significant area of low pressure in the Atlantic. I think the central pressure with that is perhaps going down to around 970 millibars, 975 millibars, something like that. It's a very deep area of low pressure for the 22nd of May, and it could well bring gale force winds to island or western part of Scotland, and quite a blow across most parts of the country, uh, actually. Uh, it also bring cooler air as well. We go through to Saturday and the low pressure has transferred to the north of Scotland. We're in a cooler, showery, westerly type flow then. High pressure is building up down to our southwest though at 1,030 millibars. And it's not long at all. We only have to go through to Sunday to see the high pressure beginning to reinflate, re 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 re-established uh, again from the south. So this is turning much of northern France, England, Wales, mostly dry and warm or possibly even very warm. Still quite uh, windy and showery and maybe quite cloudy up in the north on Sunday. But by back on Monday, that high pressure is drifting even further. So by back on Monday, most places should be looking mainly dry. Of Rootland and Wales, that could be a very warm uh, bank holiday Monday. Indeed, very warm, mainly dry. Temperatures possibly moving back up into the mid 20 Celsius again. Uh, beyond the bank holiday, uh, we go through Tuesday. And again, we're under high pressure, bringing lots of dry, settled, warm conditions uh, with it. Heading up towards day 10, then we start to pull the high pressure out to our west a little bit, start to drop in some cooler air from the northwest, and maybe a bit more showery up in the north, but in the south, we're still close to high pressure, so we'll be relatively dry in the south, but all those probably see the temperatures lowering again through the second half of next week. Into more extended range, this GFS run wants to start turning things cooler and more unsettled as the high pressure pulls out into the middle of the Atlantic, and we start to draw down more of a northerly wind. So this particular GFS run turning it rather showery and quite cool uh through the opening days of uh, june i'm not sure about that but uh but uh, that's certainly what this gfs run wants to do anyway turn things cooler and maybe a bit showery through the first uh days of june interesting parallels there with the early part of june 1995 of course we've been talking about this quite a bit lately but there does seem to be a similarity at the between weather patterns that we've got right now and uh, weather patterns that we had, like uh, back in 1995, which was like 25 years ago, is quite a similarity. And 1995, June 1995, I should say, did start on quite a coolish uh, note. Actually, the first half of June 1995 was quite cool. And we had northerly winds. There's a fair amount of dry weather. But um, anyway, quite interesting that how the GFS is trying to introduce a northerly flow and cool things down through the, uh, oh, through the first week of June. Uh, moving through to the GM, and we look like that on uh, on Friday. So again, this deep area of low pressure out to west of Ireland. That's quite a significant area of low pressure for the time of year. Could well bring gale force winds to the north and to the west. It's dry though down in the south and the southeast. Getting through to the back body weekend, this high pressure increasingly influential from the south and southwest, pushing northwards, bringing loads of dry uh, weather with it as well. Temperatures will be really starting to lift up again over the bank holiday weekend and that warm dry weather very warm dry weather continues into tuesday uh, next week as well temperatures again could easily be in the mid 20s celsius uh with that i would have thought and it goes on actually into the middle of next week remember at this point the gfs is starting to bring cooler air and a more showery flow from the northwest but the gm keeps things looking very warm uh, even into the middle of next week with again temperatures probably into the mid maybe even upper 20s celsius not until right at the very end of a gm run day 10 uh, friday 29th of may but we finally start to pull in some cooler air from the northwest but the gm is definitely uh, really warm uh, for next week today and then we've got the ecmwf looking like that so again we're looking at heavy uh, or strong winds i should say uh, out to west with this deep area of low pressure and seasonably deep really the time of year could well bring gale force winds to ireland and western parts of scotland on Friday and push brings a push of cooler air across all parts of the country as well from Friday through to Saturday but into the bank holiday weekend the Azores high again gets back into the ascendancy building back up from the southwest bringing lots of dry and warm or very warm weather to England and Wales always a little bit more uh, cloudier and windier across Scotland and Northern Ireland maybe a bit damp up there but for England and Wales the weather looks set fair through the second half bank holiday weekend
That's Tuesday 22nd of uh, May, so a week today. Again, England and Wales looking dry and very warm under the ridge of high pressure. Could be a little bit more showery up to the northwest. And then heading up towards day 10, we just keep high pressure very, very close to the country, really at 1,035 millibars. The air does turn cooler coming in around the high pressure. Um, so it cools down, but the high pressure keeps us mostly dry right where today takes. If you're waiting for rain, then uh, for England and Wales, anyway, the only prospect of uh, rain really looks to be chance of thunder on Thursday. And that looks like a relatively low chance. Other than that, it looks like the dry spell goes on. There will be more rain, of course, though, up in the north as there has been. This is the option that's on the table within the ECM Ensembles today for day 10, getting us to the 29th of uh, May. We have 51 out of 51 members of the ECM Ensembles with an area of above average heights over and just to the west of the country, some lower heights up to the north. The jet stream is doing something a bit like that. So uh, day 10. 29th of May, the ECM is definitely still favouring a uh, higher pressure. In two weeks' time, these, this is the option that we've got again. It's only one of them. 51 out of 51 members of the ECM ensembles for the 3rd of June, showing an area of above average heights just out to our west. Maybe pulling in some quite cool air from the north, just turning things a little bit cooler, perhaps, as we get through to the beginning of the... Uh, beginning of June. So maybe the GFS and the ECM ensembles are sort of in agreement with one another by early June. We could be favouring some northerly winds uh, with the high pressure set up out to our west. So it won't be particularly unsettled. It could be a little bit showery and it could be a bit on the cool side if we're bringing in the winds from the north. Again, 1995 uh, parallels there. If anybody remembers the first half of 1995 and what happened with the northerly winds and then the hot weather that set up around the middle or third week of uh, June 1995. Do let me know in the comments. Uh, right, so finally, CFS V2. These are 500 mm heights, and they're broken down into uh, weekly periods. The first weekly period will take us from the 19th to 25th of May. The coming week is dominated by high pressures. We've already established going to be loads of dry and warm weather uh, to come. There is going to be a little interruption with more unsettled conditions like Friday, Saturday. That could include some gale force winds across western parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland. Uh, but overall, it's an anomaly for the week. High pressure is uh, ruling the roost. Into week two, this is the 26th of May to 1st of June. Above average heights then sort of to our south, but also to our northeast and to our west as well. Lower heights out to the northwest. Jet stream doing something a little bit like that. So you would have thought relatively uh, dry and uh, still quite warm really in week two. Could just be a little bit more showery up in the north. Week three is the is the second to the eighth of June, with high pressure then over Scandinavia and going up to our north. Some lower pressure out to our west southwest. Winds are sort of coming in from a southeasterly, southerly to southeasterly direction. Should be a lot of dry weather in with that too, uh, and could be very warm as the winds are pushing up from the south or southeast. It's just this trough of low pressure down to our southwest that might provide the energy for some heavy rain or thunderstorms into the south and the west. It's rather flimsy to suggest that, but possibly warm and a little bit thundery there in week three. And then week four, look at this, we're back into the high pressure big time. This is the 9th to the 15th of June with a large area of high pressure centred to our north and northeast. Winds are coming in from an easterly direction at this point. Probably quite, uh, probably dry and could be quite hot uh, actually that away from the east coast anyway. So the signals continue to be as they have been. High pressure is really uh, in control of the weather uh, and uh, continues to be so. There won't be continuous high pressure all the time. There will be interruptions. We're going to get one of those coming up uh, on uh, Thursday uh, through to Saturday. And then the high pressure builds back from the uh, Azores and uh, turns us dry and warm again, especially for England and Wales 
as we move up towards the end of May, there could be a bit of a signal, uh, end of May, beginning of June, there could be a bit of a signal to start to pull that high pressure out into the Atlantic and maybe bring down some slightly colder air from the north. And if we was to do that, or some cooler air from the north, I don't want to go too over the top with um, cold, but bring down some cooler air from the north through the early part of June. If we do that, it will still be relatively dry as the Atlantic is blocked. It will just be uh, a change in the air. That's a lowering of the temperature, probably bring quite a lot of cloud with those northerly winds as well. And would be kind of similar to what happened through the uh, early part of June 1995. I say, let me know in the comments see if you remember uh, early June 1995 being quite cool, cloudy with northerly winds. And then suddenly we went into a spell of very hot weather in the third week of June 1995. And that just carried on all the way to the end of August. Not saying we're going to get a repeat, of course, because weather never uh, sort of uh, repeats exactly um, compared to past years. But we do look out for like trends and things like that within the weather and singularities that uh, crop up now and again. So it's all very interesting, all food for thought. And of course, we won't be releasing the gas weather summer forecast until the last day of May. So you won't know actually until the last day of the month what we're forecasting for the summer of 2020. But it's all food for thought anyway. And uh, it's all up for discussion and debate, I think. So that's it anyway for uh, today's uh, videos. I'm going to be back tomorrow with 5D forecast, of course. We'll have a regular week 10 video update as always. And they'll be live streaming from 4 o'clock. It'll be our final, our last uh, Wednesday afternoon lockdown live stream from 4 o'clock. Um, and it may sort of be a bit of a live stream slash storm watch as well as we have a look at what the fungi potential is uh, for, uh, for Thursday as we break down this week's very warm and dry weather. But that's coming up tomorrow. For today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.